Good evening, foam flingers. You've tuned in for an exciting and well overdue episode of Foam After Dark. <laughs> it has been a minute, and uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get into it. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, apparently I was missed, so. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and go out there and say for the record, I will apologize if audio sounds slightly off, if lighting is slightly off. This is a temporary studio that we have set up. Um, I'm currently sharing it with me and my girlfriend. She uses um, the internet for work. I also use it for work, but uh, live streaming stuff. So it's kind of a compromise we reach. We're just like, okay, this one area of the house isn't finished, um, but it's the best that we can set up for at the moment. Uh, we're still waiting on acoustic paneling and stuff, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. So if the audio does sound weird, I do apologize. You sound great, buddy. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, of course, well, once again, I'll just go ahead and get introductions out of the way. I'm Bots, of course, content creator on uh, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. That's still a thing, kind of. Uh, <laughs> basically, anywhere that uh, there's people talking about foam I'm usually either bots or bots and blasters and of course my co-host and partner is blaster arms hello everybody <laughs> go and just give them like a real quick little recap of who you are and what you do for uh, that makes you famous um, <laughs> blasted arms and uh i'm just some dude that likes this hobby and uh, i post stuff occasionally on the different platforms uh mm -hmm. blasted arms pretty much everywhere if i'm there yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's basically been a minute. We, I just kind of wanted to get on the mics because it has been entirely too long. I wanted to let you guys know we have not pod faded. I know that's um, kind of a fate that a lot of people fear happens to their favorite podcast shows. But no, we were not. Um, it was not the intention to just disappear out of nowhere. <laughs> um, I know I was... Uh, talking to Blaster at one point about us possibly um, having things set up so for whatever reason I can't stream in the future, I could essentially give him the reins, uh, so to speak, mark him down as an editor, which I think means he'll be able to stream on the channel, so this way my viewers can see it, so this way they don't have to go multiple places, but he still gets the views or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out if it becomes an issue. Yeah. For future, yeah. For future things, yeah. I know. I know was a, like a big issue for us when we talked about it. But I mean, not an issue, but like a concern. I should say, an issue makes it sound like uh, we're we're at odds with each other. <laughs> an issue is just, just another word for a problem. So it's all basically, good. Um, but yeah. So okay, Blaster. What have you been up to for the? Uh, month or so that i've kind of been like off offline <laughs> uh making some stuff here and there mm -hmm. and uh i've been wrapped up with a lot of work stuff though so um, that's understandable yeah uh, uh, work stuff's kind of eating my life up a little bit more than i really want it to but uh, that's the way it goes some days yeah i mean that's life sadly <laughs> but um let me see well, speaking of in regards to working on things, um, I got a package in recently to my new address, which I was kind of surprised that it made it uh, because I'm always sketchy. I'm sorry. I'm always scared of sketchy packages when you change addresses or anything. That's why I don't like to move a lot. But I got a package in for Mr. Xbox Games. And uh, he sent me all manner of goodies, which I'm not going to spoil here. Uh, but one thing he did send me is... Um, some patches and a couple of stickers so i'll try to get these out to people that um could appreciate them looking at like you blaster your, uh, <laughs> that's cool i like your uh correcting the addresses on the label there that was very cute <laughs> well yeah you know we're, we're, we're high quality you know here you know, top tier <laughs> top tier show <laughs> from xbox to bots what? that's cool yep nothing is shown there at all like no no address no real names no nothing and that's because me and xbox know each other on, on a, i'll just say a real name basis but i still don't believe in 
doxing somebody if I don't have to. Oh, hey, CR Nerf, welcome. Uh, I sent you a note with some stickers. I must. Uh oh, it's cool. If you send it to the old address, that's perfectly fine. I can still retrieve it from there. Um, it's no worries. I haven't publicly announced my new address yet because uh, one thing that we are planning to do is set up a PO box in our new uh, city. So. Uh oh. Okay. Well, CR Nerf, uh, just reach out to me on. I mean, you know how to get a hold of me. Just reach out to me. I'll send you the new address. It got sent back. Well, I mean, I will say hopefully, I and mean, thankfully that would be a good thing if it did get sent back. <laughs> For no other reason than uh, no one was a, was a jerk and kept it. <laughs> but anywho, yeah, so I, I got that surprise package from X. Well, it wasn't really a surprise package. I knew it was coming, but I had just kind of, it slipped my mind. Because, you know, everything with the move and everything, I was like, oh. And then it showed up one day and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was pretty cool i was glad to get it um let me see i don't really think we have too much to talk about i mean i did have a couple of things i wanted to bring up but i definitely wanted to give you guys an update as far as what's going on you know with the channel and stuff like that yeah go ahead blaster i'm sorry what was that no i i didn't hear what you said you kind of came off a little jumbled there oh my bad I just said I kind of wanted to give them a little, like, um, I guess, update as far as where I had been and, like, what had been, like, transpiring and why there had been no show or anything. Yeah. No fade going on here. Just, uh, life. Basically. Okay, so I do have a couple of, uh, I guess I'll say, uh, you alerts to put out there. I can't find them here at the moment, but if you are in need of the Dart Zone um, Pro MK Mark 1.2, that is on sale right now, I believe, for 30 bucks, maybe 20 bucks. Is that deal still going on? Yeah, it is Dang. still going on. I've Dart Zone decided to extend it, as well as the deal to the, um, what's the other one? The MK3, which the MK3 has been on sale forever but i think they've lowered the price to 30 bucks as well wow that's cool yeah somebody in uh in one of my groups sent it to me and i was like oh cool i need to post that but i like i said i've been so busy <laughs> wasn't able to track it down um on a side tangent if you are looking to get your hands on the omnia the omnia is back on stock at uh, walmart.com so you might be able to get Get your hands on that. It's apparently a new batch. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> on Walmart? Yeah, Walmart.com. Okay. I can share a link. Yeah, I can bring that up real quick. Yeah, I, I thought it was odd at first as well because I was like, why is the Omnia? Uh, being sold on Walmart. And I had uh, speculated. Let me go ahead and bring it up real quick. Probably because they needed to uh, mm -hmm. uh, extend sources of sale points to recover their loss of uh, fixing the little deviation problem from the first batch. As possible. So they needed to put it out wherever they possibly could. Mm hmm another theory sometimes oops another theory is uh possibly that this is a um I, i've speculated this for a while but this was a scalper who bought up all of them that were available and they're trying to sell them off again <laughs> to recoup some loss but i, I, I could be wrong it's because most people know that the walmart.com website it's more like a marketplace kind of like amazon or like ebay where all you have to do is make an account and you can sell Pretty much anything there. I mean, of course, like they have like restrictions and limitations and stuff, you know, as far as what you can and can't sell. And if you have too much negative uh, feedback, you, you know, you'll get booted. But besides the point. Wall Bay. 
Yeah. But uh, yeah, here it is, $89. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Yeah, $89.99. Pretty cool. Um, I don't have an Omnia myself. I'll put that out for transparency. But I have used one at a few wars. Uh, my buddy Vernon, uh, who I went to Jerry's Epic Blaster Battle with, he had one. I got to use his. I got to uh, shoot up at the at the big, uh, oh, what are they called? I don't know, the big like televisions that are there. Oh, the name's escaping me right now. The Jumbotron thing? There we go, the Jumbotron. Yeah. And we, we kept trying to see if we could tag it. And we got like this close. Like we almost tagged it with a, with a stock on it. Nice. Omnia is one that I that I would like to get my hands on. Yeah, for sure, man. It's it's a lot of fun to use. As somebody who messed around with it on the sidelines, it's pretty cool. Anyways, let's go ahead and shut that down. Um, let me see. What else? <laughs> Well, we did have we did have a build a community creation build that we wanted to talk about. Oh, the the one that we had talked about. Yes, that one. The one in the host chat. Okay. Spoiler: yeah. We have a little bit of a host chat. <laughs> it's it, that's actually how we kind of uh, help coordinate our stuff. But yeah, I'll go ahead and bring that up. I think everybody knows that. Well, I mean, I should hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so basically, from our buddy Foam Darksman, aka Better Call Surge, he has done a lot of work on the Slingfire. And I will say honestly, the Slingfire is not a blaster I like, and not because I don't like lever action blasters. I love the Sentinel. Um, but generally, I would avoid the Slingfire because I felt it was too flimsy and too weak at least stock at least stock it was pretty terrible and you know you're free to debate me on that <laughs> um i i've had i've thrifted a lot of them mm -hmm. that the uh the slip gear mm -hmm. um uh just just doesn't the the clutch is just won't hold up at all um and the clutch is there you know to help keep just to prevent destroying the stuff yeah but it winds up if it's too worn then it just nothing works right and i've thrifted a couple where that clutch just doesn't hold up for anything yeah it's just been um, wrecked yeah yeah and so that's that's i think why there's the um the metal lever right but then, you know, the thing is, by the time you put the, the metal geared lever in there and everything else, um, it's just a lot of money for. Yeah. And you uh, see, an interesting thing that Serge has done is he's just removed that, you know, that mechanism entirely, which I know some people would say, well, it's not a sling fire at that point. In that case, I'll just shrug my arms and say, mm hmm. Um, and he's essentially put in a priming assembly, very similar to, like, the Retaliator. I know I've watched this video before, uh, which, by the way, you know, this is Foam Darksman on YouTube. Definitely go check him out. Um, and I, I'll, I will say for full transparency, I had this video on in the background as I was laying down some tile and stuff. So I wasn't 100% paying attention, but I definitely liked the work he put into it, and I definitely liked the way that um, the way that it performed. Um, I don't want to play the video in its entirety because uh, I definitely think you guys should go and watch it for yourself. But let me see. So with his uh, mod modifications, he's getting at least 120 plus, 143 at some places. I guess I can play this little part here. From the ballistics yeah. combo and the it's it's pretty spot on accurate too mm -hmm. um he and i were talking back and forth while he was building it and oh, cool. it's pretty it's pretty good um i like how he did the um the brass in the pusher that's kind of a thing that uh, we've done 
where I make a skinny pusher and put a piece of brass in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so a piece of 3 8 inch brass will still slide in. It will still hey. allow the mag to mag drop. And uh, Shattered, um, thank you so much for the follow. But yeah, this is a, a mod he's done to the sling fire. Some people would argue that it's not a sling fire anymore. I still think it's awesome. And the performance is definitely there. I mean, it's not lever action anymore, but well, no, that, anything that... else, it clearly looks like a sling fire just without the lever action. I love the screwdriver handle. Prime. Yeah, I, I like that too. <laughs> uh, it's like the cool too. little uh, kitschy things that uh, that get done sometimes that make the things worthwhile. It seems pretty and accurate. Extended too. barrel. It's, oh, oh, it's nice. really accurate. See, that, that's one thing I didn't notice. I didn't notice that he had... Um, it's still compatible with full length arts. Or at least maybe this variation of it. Uh, I think so. That, that's cool. I mean, because obviously it's working with the half darts, no problem. No, I don't think it is full length or double length as he likes to <laughs> double to length. It, you know? <laughs> nice. Yeah, double length darts. <laughs> Cuz half darts have become standard darts. Yeah. <laughs> and uh somebody somebody in our Discord the other day or today or whatever made a joke about uh going to one of the sandwich shops and ordering a double length sandwich. <laughs> Oh god, that's hilarious. And uh, just for clarification, this uh, gameplay footage is in Houston, the Houston area. So if you are in Houston or in the Texas area, uh, somewhere close to that area, um, definitely look up uh, Hanu and look up Space City Foam League. Uh, respectively, they fulfill different niches. Yeah, so this is uh, this was a Hanu event. Okay. Uh, it's over no, in Humble. The, the H is silent, people. <laughs> uh, and uh yeah it's fun come out and join us that's the first usually the first saturday mm -hmm. of every month out here in houston and come join us have some fun we'll have a blast and good time yeah uh, on that note i have a couple of friends that are going up that way i think there's they should be going up that way this weekend to join you guys for that war so hopefully it'll be a good time for everybody Awesome. I'll be glad to shoot them. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a really cool mod that Surge uh, put out, but um, watching it actually kind of sparked a conversation piece, um, which is actually something I've been thinking about for a while, and I know I've kicked around back and forth um, with people in my local community, as well as on our Discord, Home After Dark. But um, it's essentially that... I had brought this up on the World Foam Alliance uh, call in line, which let me compose my words so I don't jumble all over them, <laughs> which is the hobby has essentially become very disposable. And what I mean by that is in the old days, you used to get a blaster like a sling fire, a retaliator, rampage, raider, what have you, and you would mod it and you would make it work to your specifications. and. I'll say for total transparency, I have nothing against people that 3D print anything or anything like that. But I noticed that that's when the hobby started shifting in the way that it... Um, that kind of old guard, so to speak, in regards to this is how we conduct ourselves uh, as, you know, this is a blaster. I customize it to my own tailored specification, brass barreling, you know. Teflon tape in the O-rings, lube with super lube, etc. Uh, nowadays, people just go down to the store and buy a Nexus Pro. You know, it's the oldest meme in the in the book. <laughs> but um, it's well, it's probably the newest meme in the book. It's just been recycled <laughs> the most, right? Um, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're definitely not wrong. But um, I, I guess basically the uh, point I was trying to get across is 
I have had people tell me actively, which is why bother thrifting at all, if all this trash that you're thrifting, so to speak, is never going to be up to competitive specs. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like, you know, a, a video like this, uh, where Surge did this mod, just basically shows that a good form factor is a good form factor. You know, you can make it do whatever you want, but I guess people don't have the patience for that anymore. Um, so I think one of the things is that one of the longest carriers in this hobby was the, was the creativity of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and there was a, a cult of creativity was really what this hobby was for the longest time. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, just looking back through like Nerf Haven and, uh, our Nerf homemades and stuff like that. And you see, uh, all the, all the custom builds, all the one-offs and, and then a progress of one person's build inspired another person's build inspired five other people's builds inspired 10 other people's builds and just the that progressive feeding off of each other collective creativity is what the, the most of what this hobby was and really what i really enjoyed about it when mm -hmm. i first looked at it um the 3d printing aspect of it as well is cool because then you can make like little custom parts that you couldn't necessarily otherwise make or you can make it makes performance parts uh a little bit easier to make and then mm -hmm. to share those parts with other people and the the progress of it is just uh it's like a natural progression of things and then as the as the performance is increased, you know, especially with the, the 3D printing and the hardware kits and that kind of stuff, uh, and sharing those ideas around, it made the performance enough. And then, you know, competitiveness kind of got into it. Mm -hmm. And then other companies, as as other companies like Swift and Worker started making, you know, hobby-focused blasters, you know, small volume pieces yep. and even the the terminator or so which was really just a retaliator shell yeah um but it was a retaliator shell that took all the retaliator mods and turned the retaliator into you know a 150 to 200 fps yep. you know if you could if you could shoehorn enough uh and a bring in there and still in it. prime it yeah <laughs> uh, and just it's just progression so it, it irritates me, honestly, a little bit when people do say things like thrifting blasters is a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Now, if somebody's asking why, that's one thing. But mm -hmm. making that a blanket statement, it's like, dude, you're a chump. Yeah. Like thrifting, the purpose of thrifting blasters is, isn't so that it's a piece of crap or whatever. It's so that you have something that will inspire some creativity um you know something to build off of i build off of a lot of stuff i do a lot of 3d printed i've got fully completely 3d printed blasters that i've done i got 3d printed blasters that i've designed from scratch well you and, see and yeah go, go ahead sir and it's just that but i still thrift mm -hmm. and i still mod and i still design parts to to go into to stock blasters to up their performance oh yeah because one of the things is that the performance isn't everything so if that's what if that's what people are thriving on it's like oh well i can get a nexus pro and it shoots 150 fps it's like okay that's cool whatever um i'll still take you out with uh this 60 fps or 50 fps silent night because you didn't hear me coming yep or uh um uh get a hammer shot that goes 90 fps and you, you know you got five good shots there that can take somebody out and it's pretty silent too no it's just it, it there's a lot to there's a lot to tags 
that's beyond just FPS mm -hmm. um, and accuracy and, and stuff. Yeah, that stuff helps, but it's not everything. Mm -hmm. And making tags isn't everything about the game. Yeah, that's very going on in a, you know, running around the park and just having fun with with a group of people. Like we go to the park and shoot at our friends. Like, please tell me what other hobby where you you do that. What other hobby can you shoot at a friend and not have to deal with uh, any sort of repercussions? <laughs> right, like legal ramifications. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's true though. Um, one thing I did or, want or to... pay a fortune to do it because I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, you can go play airsoft with your friends. You can go pay paintball with your friends. Yeah, but um, you can't but... do them in a public park. Yeah, but you can't do that stuff in a public park, or or if you are in one of those places, I mean the economics of it start getting out of hand pretty quickly. Oh yeah. Of course, you look you at know, the collection um, of blasters, and you're like, well, economics, dude, and you're like, eh, okay, whatever. Um, to kind of comment on that, this is like a tangent, but definitely relevant to what you said about the economics of the hobby. Um, which like today we were at Academy. I think we were looking for uh, for a hunting blind or something. Um. But besides the point, we happened to go through the uh, the archery aisle, and for whatever reason, at this academy, they have archery right next to like paintball, airsoft, uh, gel blaster, etc. And my girlfriend has been interested in taking up some of those extra hobbies, which I'm totally fine with. You know, like you should definitely explore what you're interested in. And um, she was saying, "Oh, well, it's not that expensive to get into paintball. It's you know, ten bucks for five hundred rounds." And I was like, "Yeah, but look over here at the." At the at the gillets you know for gel fire and uh so forth it's like 10 bucks for a hundred thousand rounds <laughs> you know it, it's kind of like i'm not saying like one is better than the other what i'm saying is if you get into the economics of things you know the metrics as far as uh are you going to be providing ammo just for yourself or for an entire group you know it definitely starts um right it starts adding up <laughs> right i get that mm -hmm. uh i I'm just so anti gel balls. Like that's I just, totally fine. That's I, totally fine. <laughs> uh, but like I have paintball markers, and I I have a you know I keep a case of paintball around, and um, it's been a while since I've done it, but we'll go pop targets in the backyard or yeah, there, there, like there's nothing wrong with that at all either. Um, but and, to 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 go back to what you were saying earlier about how. Uh, you know, like back in the old days, it was a hobby of creation, you know, where people would exchange ideas and a free exchange of ideas and so forth. Um, I've noticed, hey, Samson, welcome. Uh, I've noticed that that kind of like free exchange of ideas has kind of migrated from the general like hobby space to the 3D printing space. And that's come with its own issues as well. Uh, and keep in mind, I'm not a 3D printer. I know that you are. And um, it seems like, for example, you design something and you share that file with somebody and that person improves on it, whatever. And that's not really the problem. The problem comes when somebody tries to profit off somebody else's design in regards to that particular space. Um, I think that's where a lot of the issues are... Um, it's just a big shift from how the community used to be. I don't see an issue with people profiting off of, like if I post something and mm -hmm. I say it's freely available, I don't have an issue with people printing it for, you know, and, and selling the, the prints. But the, but, oh, how do I say that? Um, but I don't necessarily respect you. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to tell you you're doing anything wrong because you're not doing anything wrong, but I won't respect you because you've not done anything to improve. You've not done anything to make it better. You've not, you've not done anything other than consumed what somebody mm -hmm. else has created and turned around and sold it to somebody else for profit. Yeah. Like you've done, you've done nothing to improve the creative process. Um, so you're not doing anything. So if somebody who does that, I mean, they're not necessarily doing anything wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, but like, what have you created? Mm -hmm. Right? Like it's, I don't know. I just not a lot of respect. Yeah. And um, of course for me personally, I guess this is really the only <laughs> thing I can say about that. Yeah. But and... not like, 
but not in a condescending matter. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess sometimes it's a kind of con. Like I do have a little condescending opinion of, of a few people, but um, but, but I don't like to start crap. So it's yeah, just like course, just let it go. And um, but yeah, for the most part, it's like okay, well, you know, maybe maybe if you make enough parts and make enough money, you'll figure out how to actually make things and contribute uh to the creative process so. i actually contribute to the to the hobby instead of just consuming yeah um but i say that but there's also but there is there is some value for um somebody who 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 can take a creation and make it available because yes, yeah. there's all like a balance of of what people are kind of good at some people are good at you know the production side of things and some people are more good at the creative side of things so and that's why i say like i don't respect you but it's not necessarily a condescending i don't respect you it's and and it's all contextual too right so i don't know uh i oh. do mm -hmm. i do have kind of an arm's length opinion of 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 people who just consume what other people have created and then regurgitate it to other people for a buck yeah and yeah because I know there's plenty of people that do it mm -hmm. and i don't know i don't know how to say it without sounding like a jerk so i guess i'm just <laughs> gonna sound like a jerk i just i don't know it's right. So sometimes it's like I always say: if people get offended by what you have to say, unless you're intentionally intending to piss somebody off, like if I'm like, "Hey, blaster, you're a jerk because of blah." Um, generally, if you're just speaking your truth and your opinion, and they get offended by it, uh, that's a them problem, it's not a you problem, because whoever they were, they clearly did something to to earn that reputation from you. <laughs> yeah, and I guess it's like, I guess my my i'll use the word contempt my mm -hmm. contempt is towards people who have never really created their own stuff um less so prime example would be like out of darts okay well everybody knows that luke from out of darts right and you know now he's in a role where he doesn't create as much right yeah, he, he doesn't um, have of, the... he does yeah he's kind of rolled into that production role the mm -hmm. production side of things i don't think that it's he doesn't want to create i think it's the production side has it just eats up so much time of creation yeah, yeah and, and 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 that alone running a business and the production mm -hmm. and the promotion and everything else just you know there, there's only so many hours in a day mm -hmm. and you know he's got employees that he has to pay and and that becomes a priority. So priority shift when you're responsible for other people. Yeah. Um, but like no discredit to him. Yeah, of course not. In that respect, because he he got there from being a creator. Right. He did design and create and develop things. Even with other people around him, he was still designing and developing creative uh, creating other things. Um, and then took those into more of a production way. So like mad respect that I have for, for Luke Goodman, um, because he, he took that and he, he built something off of that. Um, and that's kind of contra to what I see of other things, other of, people, <laughs> uh, where other people are taking things that other people have created and turning around and not really contributed or refined or developed it. Um, I guess, so that's that's where I, I think some of the the negativity kind of comes from mm -hmm. is that uh, as far as that other people have towards it is because th there's people that are profiting off of it that aren't really adding to it, pr producing additional creative value to it, but they are producing productive uh, production value to it. So there's yeah, there is that. You know, and that that's a very good point I would want to put out there, which is there is nothing wrong with people that provide a service to people who don't have the means to do it themselves. And uh, I know a couple of months, maybe a year back now, 
check my channel analytics. Um, I was trying to do an overview of the Maverick and I wanted a Mayfly printed and no one would print me a Mayfly because it was a copyrighted design, this and that, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I know it's a copyrighted design. I, I have the files. I purchased them myself. Um, I just don't have a 3D printer. And people just like, I don't know. It was just weird disconnect in their brains where it's like they couldn't understand. Um, I'm not paying for you to rip this off i'm paying for you for me to use your printers <laughs> if that makes any sense no that's and that's absolutely valid mm -hmm. um, i print things for people all the time that provide me files mm -hmm. um that's that was one of the first things i started doing with my 3d printer um i was 3d printing before i got into this hobby oh really? <laughs> uh, yeah that's how long i've been 3d printing um it was it was my manufacturing um background uh it's i have milling machine mm -hmm. lathe and i have machine tools and and several 3d printers and stuff like that and that was uh kind of where i came from and before i got into this hobby and that was one of the things where the whole impetus of i got here because my son comes up to me one day and says Hey, uh, hey, Dad, can um, can we can we build a Nerf gun, right? And then, like I said, you know, it's I, I'm here from there. You know, you draw the circle or squiggly lines, however you want. And uh, <clears throat> uh, I'm sure there was a point to that, and I forgot it. <laughs> well, the, I, I guess the point is that it's a natural progression for how you got into the hobby and. More oh, importantly. right. So, yeah. So, three D printing parts for other people, and that's how I that's how I started in three D printing. Was I people would send me a part or send me a file or pay me to model a part or give me a part that says, "Hey, this part's broken. Can you model and three D print me one?" And that's and that's what I would do. And so that's a service, right? Like you said, and that's providing value, and that um is is perfectly acceptable like there's nothing wrong with that and mm -hmm. if you print parts that are um creative commons on thingiverse mm -hmm. or printables or whatever all the other cults and or even just off of github you know, if they're creative commons yeah that's fine like it's there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. you know um, and i think i think mm -hmm. people are going to confuse with what i said before that now I'm walking it back because I'm not walking it back. You're just clarifying. <laughs> I'm clarifying that it's perfectly fine to do that. If that, but if that's the only thing you do, I may or may not have a very high opinion of you. Like that's just. Um, I I think in all honesty, it, it speaking for myself, of course, it would depend on how you're presenting yourself out there. Like if you're presenting yourself out there as, hey, I'm offering this service to the community and that's all you're claiming to do, I think that's perfectly fine. But if you're like some other people in the hobby space, and I'm not going to name names or point fingers because we don't do that, um, but there's plenty of people who have ripped off and stolen designs from other people who have put in a lot of work and it's just a scummy practice. Well, yeah, if, if you're if you're making designs from other people that are a licensed design and you're not compensating them. So, and that's why I clarified, like if you're yeah. on creative commons, whatever, do whatever, man. Um, but once again, just, you know, if, if you're cool with siphoning off of other people's creativity and not, and not adding anything to it not adding any sustained value to it, then that's fine. That's fine for you. And mm -hmm. then what I what I think about it shouldn't matter because if you're justified in what you're doing, then what I have to say about it is pretty irrelevant. Then, yeah. um, so don't get pissy about it. <laughs> don't uh, get pissy. Right. Don't don't get pissy about it because I don't agree with you. Right. And I think that all too common in this day and age, right? Disagreement means disrespect. No, I don't. I don't agree with what you're doing. That doesn't mean I think you're a piece of garbage. It just means I don't agree with you. Like. It means I, I think that you're a piece of garbage a little bit. I'll go keep it to myself. <laughs> I, I mean, I might have a little, a little bit of contempt, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the conversation. Like it, it, and again, right? It's like if somebody's acting like, oh, they've they've created all this stuff, then I would just throw it, 
throw it back. I'm like, you didn't create anything. Yeah. Like you assembled, you manufactured, you, you didn't create anything. Yeah. And, uh, well, actually to kind of back step a little bit, uh, and also Serge is in the chat. Serge, okay. when, did, when did Samson and Serge get here? Like what, was I asleep? Oh, yeah. I was running my mouth. You much. were rambling. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I was, oh, sorry guys. It was a long day. Um, what do you, um, you see back in the old days and you know, here, here's me putting on my old man glasses. Mm. Um, <laughs> You see, okay, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is the Boom Nitron. And who was the one who first came up with the idea for the Boom Nitron? I believe it was Bobo Lolo, unless I'm mistaken. But everybody who's made a Boom Nitron since then has always said, I made Bobo Lolo's Boom Nitron, or a Boom Nitron inspired by Bobo Lolo, or whatever. You know, credit was always given, even though, like, it, it's essentially a design that was shared with the community. And I think where the disconnect comes, at least in regards to 3D printing things, is that has kind of dropped off. Where it's like, let's say I designed a semi-automatic, whatever, Griffin-style <laughs> hotness, new hotness. You know, I, I don't want to name a specific blaster, right? And I'm like, hey, what do you think of this blaster? And I send it to you. And then you take it and you start sharing it out there like you created it without crediting the original person. And I think that's where, like, it's... It's it's misrepresentative of what the hobby has, like, grown from. Back then, it's like... Everything was open and welcoming and we would, like, build things on top of each other. But we would always credit the original thing. And you, it, it could always be something just as simple as... Hey, this was based off of Lolo's original design, but I did this instead. So now instead of calling it a boom nitron, I call it a, a boom zinger. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> a bots nitron. <laughs> right, a, a bots, bots nitron. nitron. There you go. But but you you understand what I'm saying now. Um, Oscar, thanks for the follow. I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I I I do see what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um I have to admit that I do see it from time to time, oh, yeah. but, but I don't think that that has creeped into from what I've seen as broad and sweeping. I still oh, think no, yeah, that yeah. For the most part and, and I'm well past greater majority <laughs> of the time is that, uh, if somebody does make something, they do acknowledge where it came from. Mm -hmm. um when they at least when they first post about it and if they're hosting files or something like that there's usually a blurb in there it's like hey this was derived from you know a griffin because mm -hmm. there's like a bajillion griffin derivatives now which you know it's just that's an amazing baseline design like it fits a, a griffin is good as is mm -hmm. like just a stock griffin is a phenomenal piece of kit and by accident it was designed to be incredibly modular and so that also makes you know things that are incredibly modular are also easy to modify mm -hmm. because the, the panelization of it it just allows it to oh well i want it to look like this so okay you take these three panels and you redesign those three panels and voila you have a new Griffin 1.743 Alpha <laughs> Derivative Bravo 739er and uh, uh, EX plus Alpha <laughs> Turbo right. Edition. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love how you put Turbo Edition there, man. <laughs> you just dated yourself. Right, I know, I know. You, you just started to date, like, listing number. And, and you know, okay. The reason why I did that is because recently me and my girlfriend have been playing Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo on the Super Nintendo because oh, we, didn't, we exactly. didn't have internet here. So we were just playing old school Super Nintendo. <laughs> nice. Uh, anyways, nice. side yes, tangent. And in the 90s, everything was a Turbo. Yeah. Like, once the third or fourth uh, version of something came around, it there was a Turbo in there mm -hmm. somewhere. Oh. Well, if I ever um, if I ever design a blaster or anything like that, I want I definitely want to put like Turbo Edition or Turbo Fighting, or Turbo Flinging, like as a tagline, like the Griffin the Bots 2K Dur Turbo. Yeah, Turbo Edition. 
or something. I don't know. Oh, maybe in the future. But <laughs> um, yeah, I think we kind of got off. Get to sketching, buddy. Get to sketching, buddy. There you go. <laughs> Uh, well, okay, going back to the original, we, we didn't, we did not get off topic. Right? No, no, like, no. Okay, it was, it was definitely. This podcast is nothing but rambling. We jump from topic to topic, so we are never off topic. Well, you've got me there, sir. You've got me there. <laughs> um, but but essentially, we are like to... wizards. Every topic we are on is precisely the topic we intended to discuss. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll, I'll run with that. I have no issues against <laughs> uh, okay but to go back to thrifted blasters um you know there, there was one thing that i always wanted to to talk about I, i've always meant to talk about it on my channel never got the chance uh, maybe one day i'll do a video on them but it's essentially sleeper builds and sleeper builds were always the new hotness and i know um i think they've kind of fallen off a little bit because nowadays I've seen people do stuff like a, get like a like a takedown or a rough cut and um, I'm sorry not a rough cut I'm thinking what was the other one the Saturn right that this the rival like shotgun ish thing yeah yeah and essentially instead of just turning it into a sleeper they'll just drill a hole in it and be like look it takes talon mags now and they'll do something like fly core or something and that's it is what it is, but uh, in the old days, there was a thing called a Retalicon, and oh my god, were those so cool. Essentially, you would take an old school Retaliator shell, open it up, do some minor shell cutting modifications, but make it fit uh, Retaliator mods, or Retaliator internals rather, which, mean, which meant that you could put any Retaliator mod into an old Recon shell, and you could just like blow people's minds. Oh, right. I mean, Retalicons are still a thing. Oh, no, um, no, yeah, I know that. It's just... I still see... Uh, I mean, uh, obviously, they're not as prevalent as they were three years ago mm -hmm. because uh, just by... Because Nexus, Nexus Pro. Pro. <laughs> right? Um, but it's... Uh, but I still think that, you know, they're still being built because I still see them. Um, I think Surge built one just... just a, oh, really? Cool. Within the last month or so um i've got one that i'm building um mr sanchez built one amazing one uh so this one i i loved mr sanchez built one with i don't remember what stock he used but he used a, a recon mark ii cq12 the midnight colored one so it's the blue and orange mm -hmm. and the uh and a long strike barrel nice and i don't remember what stock he used but the whole it was absolutely an amazing piece of kit like it was just a beautiful like i did not like recon mark twos before i saw that image i was like oh my god you made me like recon mark twos now i don't know how you did that I had to have been one of those rare people that when the Recon Mark II and the su subsequent Recon Mark III came out, I was all over them. I'm like, I'm going to collect all of them. I'm going to take them home with me. I'm going to show them love. <laughs> oh, and here, when when I saw them, I was like, oh, gag me. <laughs> well, I, 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 I... the knuckle duster and like the other stuff. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? Well, for me, but... I, I was happy to see the recon name come back and for it to be somewhat reminiscent of what it descended from because uh, Hasbro has a bad habit of, for example, like, um, okay, something that we always talk about, like Mavericks. There's never been like a Maverick 2.0 or a Maverick Mark III or a Maverick Pro has what do you think the what do you think the strong arm and the disruptor are no 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 but you, but you see not... that that's my point those are individual blasters like like yes you can easily like draw the evolutionary line if you will but you see going from the recon to the recon mark two to the recon mark three it's still using the name recon like it's still like painted back so to speak to basically okay. if you're understanding my train of thought with that i i get i get that so how about this Mm -hmm. um the maverick x pro should be like turbo edition the turbo edition yeah <laughs> i mean why not 
if we're going to crank the ridiculousness, we're going to go all the way to 11 as we do. Um, yeah. Well, but well, anywho, <laughs> to go back to my original point, uh, that that's kind of what I missed. I mean, that's why when the, the Recon Mark II and Mark III came out, I was excited because I was like, okay, cool, some, some callback to this. And I don't think Hasbro has ever done that recently because even with something like the long strike which i know a lot of us like uh it's never been like a long strike mark ii it's always been like the long strike the uh modulus edition or whatever it's like i don't know i just i guess i just miss seeing those names in circulation my um, old man is showing <laughs> uh, you know one of the things i did like uh mm -hmm. that i do kind of miss is the uh is the special series right so like the you know the gear up mm -hmm. and the sonic and the you know the sonic fire and the sonic ice that i mean those were kind of the clear series yeah yeah the clear series um i guess sonic ice and sonic fire were really kind of the end of that um and even then they only did that for a few blasters and um, I think a lot of them were either Target exclusives or Toys R Us exclusives. Oh, yeah, the Sonic Fire and Sonic Ice, I think, were Toys R Us mm -hmm. exclusives. Yeah, I and think, now with no Toys R Us, that's kind of a. I think thing, I right? still have footage somewhere from way back when, before I had a YouTube channel of any sort, but where we were at a. Um, where we were at a a Toys R Us and I was like showing off like oh here's the, the Sonic Fire Sonic Guy Sonic whatever because back then we were doing like an HPZ type of game but it was kind of like Men in Black style themed <laughs> where it's like an alien invasion thing except you know it was zombies instead of uh, aliens but you know Men in Black because Men in Black it was a movie that came out at the time I'm dating myself <laughs> yeah that was a good movie though all of them mm-hmm but you're dating yourself across a uh, about uh, was it twelve year span that they took to make those movies? Yeah. Between like the first one, the second one, the third one, the fifth one, the seventeenth one. I think it was the Whatever. second one. That's we were actively working on this. That was a good one. I like that one. Yeah. The first two were pretty good. The rest of them were weird. Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, anyways. Uh, is there anything else you you you, you want to mention? Uh, Blaster, I think we've kind of like talked for about an hour, give or take. <laughs> oh, we yeah. have. Well, uh, Serge mentioned the Nerf Retaliator X Pro. I mean, yeah, why not? Although, then shouldn't it be the Recon X Pro, right? Instead of yeah, it should be the Recon X Pro. <laughs> oh, uh, I did have one question. What yeah, was the difference between the Recon Mark II and the Recon Mark III, other than paint? Um, I think and it... a Roman numeral. I think it's just a minor change with the internals. I think it's something with the catch, like they changed the catch to be stronger. But in all honesty, I think in all honesty, it was just like a cash grab because they, they were shipping it off with different uh, accessories, different accessory packs. Yeah, less accessories from what mm -hmm. I recall. And less had accessories, kind of but it was cheap. Modulus, the modulus white and green color mm -hmm. or whatever to it, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was a Mark II with a repaint. <laughs> And one room in numeral. I mean, okay. you're not wrong. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, see, uh, before we get out of here entirely, um, I just wanted to go ahead and put out there. I went to a Halloween event that a local club was running in the area. And it's not a local club that I usually go to. It, it was a gel fire club and uh they did like an hvz type of event and i was kind of surprised at how much fun it was but preference this by saying i went with my family and we were kind of like ready to go you went with your family and what to uh it was essentially like an hvz event but it was like gel fire um like, like gel blaster type of things uh let me see if i can bring that up real quick i was working on the footage Hey, CR Nerf, if you got to go, man, it's, thank you for joining us, bro. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. Really appreciate it. Three, two. 
Ooh. Are we gonna see gel ball footage? You, we might, yes. I I will see. That was this awfully case. dark. I saw some footage, but it was like all black, like it was shot at night. Yeah, it, it was at night, and that was actually going to be my major complaint with it. Uh, I wanted to critique the, um, I guess, the event, for lack of a better word. Well, they could have started with better ammo. Right. <laughs> uh, let me see. I just, I, I don't like gel balls. I just, I don't, I, the, I don't feel like having to hydrate my stuff like four hours before I go to play, and then. Yeah, that, like the stuff's, the stuff's just a bloody <laughs> dang mess. Yeah, like, that that's definitely one of my issues with it as well too. Yeah. Um, I mean, I get, I like what you said earlier. You know, I mean, the ammo cost between two, the and paint one, is, is significantly better you know, per round, but uh, yeah. Go ahead and... uh, all that all that does is that uh, that motivates more spray and prey yeah, yeah which makes more more mess and yeah i just now yeah. i'm gonna turn this volume down but i'm gonna go ahead and just uh play it a little bit it's only like five minutes of footage so we went in there you can see like it's pitch black which is like like i have issues with that but i did like that the gel ammo at least the one they were using was glow in the dark type of thing uh it was pretty cool hey and since I, I was, I don't see any tracers. Yeah, why well, just shot one off a while? You, you'll see in a bit. I guess because I'm used to seeing the airsoft night footage mm -hmm. where it's literally nothing but tracers. Yeah, but basically the objective here was get two antidotes and then escape. We had to get two antidotes per person, and it was it was pretty fun to play. Uh, definitely a change of pace from what I usually do in regards to like foam flinging. Uh, not that I'm abandoning phone fleeing by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I definitely like... I definitely like the play field, and that was the main reason why we went, in all honesty. We were trying to see if we can schedule it for a future event. Maybe possibly for some sort of uh, major event in the future. But uh, it's a paintball field, and they, they are open to uh, having people play in like like different types of things it's not just like paintball that you have to play there and uh, yeah. my major complaints with the event as you can see is it's it's all dark and i, I had my uh, my digi action uh, camera which is uh, what i use when i capture war footage or whatever this is in low light mode but uh it, it was it was just so pitch black there that's Man. really good at low light, though. You I'm think gonna so? Tell you that, uh, yeah. So the fact that you can actually make out some of the buildings with some of the shadow yeah, lighting, yeah, yeah. that's really good low light footage. That that thing captured it really well. Oh, no, yeah. yeah especially, especially when you've got, like, it's you can still see, like, the outline of the buildings and such like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have the glow in the dark swinging across the screen. Yeah which should throw off the light and color balance on the camera, but it's not. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be uh, drastically shifting off of that. That's a really quality piece of kit there, man. Yeah, I mean, it should be. I paid 500 bucks for it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think you got your money's worth. I mean, it's not night vision, but you can make out the, What's going the on, yeah. edges. Yeah, I mean, you can't make out people so much very well, but you can... Mm -hmm. You can certainly see the mm -hmm. the terrain. You can see that there's some action. And you can see the shots. Getting fired. Yeah, coming up here, me and my sister are going to breach this building, and you'll definitely like see how the camera like kind of like holds up. Oh, I want to see your dynamic entry techniques. What the heck is that? It's a strobe light that they have going on. No, it's what the heck was coming out of there. I thought it was like some type of like they they had like these weird like like throw drapes on. I like, thought it was some kind yeah. of land land kraken. So uh, once again, we're we're in here to kind of get the antidotes. The antidotes are like these little glowing bits, like essentially they're glow sticks. If I'm being honest, uh, oh, cool. me and my sister lit up this guy that's laid on the floor. So I had to stop for a second and be like, "Dude, are you okay?" And he's like, "Yeah, I'm fine." <laughs> So if you got, so there were zombies there. Yeah, 
Yeah, the... If you got tag, if you got tagged by a zombie, did you become a zombie? <laughs> it was uh, it was ta uh, kill confirm. So it's like if you got tagged, your uh, teammate can bring you back up, but it didn't count as a victory for the round unless you essentially everybody who escaped had to escape with two antidotes uh, per person, essentially. Oh, okay, cool. So it's essentially you could you could stay alive at the end, but it wasn't considered a victory condition unless you got the required um, MacGuffins, for lack of a better word. No, that's what MacGuffins are there for. Yep. But uh, yeah, if you don't was... get the MacGuffins, you're not playing the game. Right. But it, it was definitely a real fun event. Uh, I know it started getting my uh, my uh, sister and my girlfriend to start like think, thinking more competitively in regards to stuff because they had never had people like rush them that way before because they've never played HVZ. I have played HVZ, so like. Uh, I want to say I was very stalwart, like, just shoot them, like, like if they rush you, shoot them, if anything, that's going to help your accuracy, because they'll be 10 feet for me. <laughs> right. Uh, so, you guys don't play uh, HVZ down there? Um, okay, let me, well, let me stop that footage. I did. Um, there was a group that I used to play with pre-pandemic, and uh, it was running at a local university, and I don't know what happened during the pandemic, kind of like a mix-up thing. But um, basically, after the pandemic, the group or the club that was on that university no longer like met anymore. So I don't know if maybe the person graduated. He's alumni now. He doesn't have anybody on campus to run it or do those events or whatever. Uh, so it gotcha. kind of died off. But but you don't do it even with your club. Like at Hanu, we'll run, um, we'll run a HVZ on occasion where we just we do a two team split and people can be originals. Mm -hmm. um and at a certain time or count or whatever mm -hmm. the the two teams have an option to um, combine forces mm -hmm. like last survivors kind of thing yeah um and that's just like our method for getting the zombie count up is by making the two teams uh, so the, it becomes a three-way battle between like the two teams trying to kill each other and uh, the zombies trying to make people zombied. And, yeah, it's basically yeah. HV, HVZ. <laughs> yeah, but we have we have two teams, like, and if you shoot somebody else, like, they become a zombie. Like, if you oh, shoot okay, one cool. of the opposing members of the other team, like, they become a zombie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, like, we, we have done, like, Park HVZ, but they've never uh, played a, um, I say, like, a large-scale HVZ. They've never oh, okay. had to okay. deal with uh, people that they don't know rushing towards them very quickly, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Okay, I got you. And um, okay. to, to speak honestly and not to, like, talk about, uh, like, IRL stuff, um, as somebody who's had some form of, like, law enforcement or similar training um not that you get desensitized to that but you know how to handle yourself in those situations and to to normies and most of the time they, they just panic and freak out when people <laughs> rush up there's a reason why violence of action works oh yeah <laughs> because if you're not accustomed to it it overwhelms you yeah so like totally. overwhelming 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 speed and violence of action there's a reason why those are methodologies so yeah yeah um and that's yeah. what i treat the, and that's one of the things that we talk about um at uh like at the scfl stuff mm -hmm. when we're doing drill days and and things like that that's one of the things that we we talk around we talk around is the the whole like gain the initiative push push the objective that kind of stuff so yeah yeah, I, I for, was, that, for that very specific reason. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm, I'm very objective oriented when I play. Like uh, in that footage, I might upload it to YouTube. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I don't like how dark it is, but I also like somebody might like it. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, run it, run it through a highlighter and see what you can see right. what it can pull out of it. Run it, run it through some processing. Cool. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh. I lost my train of thought. Damn, I had a brain fart. Oh, uh, okay, I just remembered. Because my sister, uh, she's never been like in a 
and a high i'll just say a high combat situation like that or whatever i say high combat with air quotes people like I'm high being, stress it's yeah high there we stress. go high stress there we go and she's like well i'm just gonna scream if they rush me i'm like hey you know what you scream but while you're screaming you pull the trigger <laughs> <laughs> and that's what i told her i'm like you scream all you want but you can make sure you pull the trigger um but yeah the the, the first two minutes of that event like i already had both my antidotes i'm like i'm good i could out right now and claim a victory condition i said but i gotta keep the team alive until we get all the ant actually i think we collected like 10 antidotes and no, no we collected 15 antidotes and we only needed 10. i remember the girl told us that at the end she was like oh you collected more antidotes than it needed and i was like you yeah we wanted to make sure we wanted to make sure those jerks over there didn't have a chance to survive <laughs> <laughs> Well, for me, it's like you told me what the objective is. We're gonna get that objective, and you know, and then that, that's all there is to it. <laughs> uh, or, or we were triple dosing ourselves, you know. Hey, General Strife, sure. thank you for thank you for the follow. General Strife. General Strife. WSG, how is everybody? Uh, we are doing good. We're actually just wrapping up an episode, sadly. <laughs> But thank you yeah. for following them. Definitely stick around for more to come. Yeah. Uh, In fact, you can join us next week at the same dark time. Same dark, dark channel. channel. Uh, all right, Peace guys. Out, everybody. Later.